Hi everyone, today we are here to talk about distance learning games that don't involve singing. So I have a separate video that's all about singing games for distance learning, so if you wanna watch that, you can go check them out there. This is gonna be non-singing games, so some are just for fun, some are more like rhythm or have different um, elements to them. Some are gonna be online, some are gonna be things that you just do, and it's gonna be a great time. If you are distance learning, I would highly suggest that you click the link down below to grab my free PDF that talks all about Zoom lesson ideas it has tons of different ideas that are super simple and you can use like tomorrow so download that down below it's free and if you still need some more help um, I do have a whole book you can't really see that very well I have a whole book um, about virtual music lessons for teaching music online Ooh. and it has over 100 pages of music lessons that again you can use tomorrow that are super simple that work that I have used in my classroom that are great that teach concepts but are fun and you can do them and yeah so i will leave them to both those things down below and with that let's hop right on in first off is instrument four corners this is one of my favorite games in person and i was like i don't know how to do this online but i have come up with two options for you actually i stole one option but i came up with the other one myself actually five minutes ago because i was talking about something in one of the singing games and i was like oh so now I'm really excited to play it. But anyway, my point being um, instrument four corners. So the four corners would be the four instrument families, woodwind, strings, percussion, and brass. And the first way you can play it is to have students, instead of going to a corner because they're online, you can have them pretend to play an instrument. So like you can play the clarinet, or the trumpet, or the trombone, or the violin, or whatever. They just pretend to play an instrument. And then you can have a student call what instrument will be out. Or you can use the website wheelofnames.com to do like a spinner to make it random. I like it that way because it's a little more random and it's a little bit easier. Um, and then whoever's doing that, so like if I was playing clarinet and woodwind got called, then I would sit down. Or you can have them like turn their cameras off so that um, you can tell who's in and who's out. It's a really easy way to tell. Um, so super simple, super fun. Another way you can do it that is even more digital is on a jam board. So I got this idea from my friend Emily over at Joyful Noise Teaching. She did it on a jam board. You could also do a Google slide, but basically you share a jam board with the four different corners. Kids put their name on there and they just drag their name to one of the four corners and then whichever corner they're in would be out. So that's instrument four corners. Number two is bop or flop. So this one's really easy. I didn't come up with this either. I found it on Instagram, but basically you just play a bunch of different songs and students say whether they like it or not like it. This is another good jam board or Google slide where kids can put their name and they can just drag to bop or flop, or you could have them do like thumbs up, thumbs down. But I think the dragging is a little bit more fun. Maybe that's just me. Um, so you can have them do that. This is a great way to um, do kind of like an opener icebreaker kind of thing if you want to use like a bunch of pop songs or you could do it for whatever you're working on. So if you're working on classical songs, you can play a bunch of classical pieces. If you're working on jazz songs, you can play a bunch of jazz songs. Actually, that's a really good idea and I might do that. If you're working on musicals, you can play a bunch of musical songs. All of those things would be great and you can hear a bunch of different things. You could also do it with instruments if you wanted to kind of like before you talk about instrument families Just talk about the instruments themselves. That would be great All right, number three is one of my new favorites and that is Asteroid so this game is like a modified game that I found online It was like a PE thing and I made it a music thing um, Basically what the how you normally play asteroid is you have a piece of paper or some kind of home base and Then you would you would get a number and you would walk that many steps in one direction And then another number walk steps in a different direction until you hear asteroid and you run back to your home base Now how I've adapted it for music and for digital learning is instead we do rhythms so you do one for every sound. So if you had like ta ta ti ti ta, that would be ta ta ti ti ta. And you go in one direction. And then when they say asteroid, you have to run back to your computer and type something into the chat. It can just be like a letter, but you gotta type something. And instead of having, usually it's the last person to get to their spot is out. Instead, what I've been doing is having the first person get a point because I found that if you try to make it the last person out, they just won't type anything, so they're not the last person. So instead, I do the first person back gets a point, most point wins. So that's a really easy game. I have this, I have like a whole thing that you can get to put up on the screen for this game and it includes like asteroid cards and it includes like all of the rhythms. There is a free one actually you can get. 
because I'm so nice. So click the link down below to grab the free one. It is the level one, so it's like quarter, eighth notes, and rest. Um, I do have them for level two, three, and four, which get harder and harder. So like 16 notes and half notes is level two. And so those are available as well. But the level one one is free. So definitely grab that below. Number four is poison. So poison is a really simple one. Basically I do a pattern, you do a pattern back, but if you do the poison pattern, then you die because you've been poisoned and I like it when they really dramatically fall on the ground. It's hilarious. Um, so we do this a lot with rhythms. Typically, you can also do it with solfege. I have done it both ways. It just kind of depends on what we are working on. It's a good way to practice a lot of patterns. The caveat is that there's a lag on line and so you can't really tell who's doing it so you have to do it mostly by sight but again there's a lag on sight so it's a little bit hard to tell you can do it but it's mostly like honor code as to whether they did it or not and because you it's really hard to tell so there's that do keep that in mind but you could do it and it's a lot of fun Number five is our first digital one, and that is either a Kahoot or a Quiz Is. So both of these, I think Quizzes is free. I know Kahoot's free. We use Kahoot a lot. I haven't used Quizzes as much, but I've heard good things, so I want to try it, and we love it. Basically, they're like online trivia games. You can find a ton of them already preloaded into Kahoot. Um, like I have found instrument ones. You can also make your own. One of my favorite little hacks is to just take like my Google Slides and take the slide and put it in as a picture and just add a question. Um, that's really easy. It's a good way to get kids really engaged because they love Kahoot, but actually learning because you can actually do like, you know, we were doing like how many beats in a measure and they were like, this is so much fun. And I was like, you're literally kind of coming anyway um so really great this who works i've used it with first grade and with fifth grade like everybody loves it it's a great time and it's a lot of fun and it's free so definitely go check out kahoot so much fun so much fun. like literally i had a fifth grader today that was like can we play kahoot and i was like dude there's two minutes left in class like don't have time but I'm glad that you like it maybe we'll play one tomorrow all right number six is extra beat take a seat I learned this from my mentor teacher I think she got it from a book but basically what happens is you take a rhythm and you play it a certain amount of time so we usually start with three and we usually start with the rhythm down down up and they play that three times so we go down down up down down up, down, down, up and then you stop and the inclination is gonna to be to start again unless you're really actively counting. If you make an extra beat, then you take a seat. So if you go back down, then you would sit out. Um, so we do this and we usually do odd numbers. So we'll do three and then we'll do five and then we'll do seven and then we'll do nine. And then I do they do it with their eyes closed and then we level up to level number two, which is down, down, up, up, up. Um, I also have like a whole free thing that you can put up on the screen for this that has the rhythms and it says like how many times you're gonna play it and all of that stuff do bear in mind again that there is that lag so it is a little bit hard to play but it's still a lot of fun the kids love it and this is a good one for like fourth and fifth grade number seven is it going to be a Nearpod time to climb? So Nearpod is a Google Slides add-on. There is a free version and a paid version. I use the free version because your girl is cheap. And so the, you basically make like a Google Slide, but you can add all these different things onto it. Like you can have them draw on the slide. You can have them match pairs. You can do different things. But the best thing is time to climb. So this is a game and basically it's a game where kids have to just get the right answer first but they make it super fun because there's like music and they get to pick their little avatar and once everyone has answered the question then their little avatars like run up the hill and whoever's winning will be like higher up the hill and or like down the mountain and stuff so it's super super fun they love it this is especially great like my second graders are obsessed i have not tried it with all of my grades but second grade they love it they love it. It's a great time. Um, so that one is super, super fun. And again, it's free. And again, I just take my Google site and I put it in there. It can be the same questions as the Kahoot. And then we put the answers in and it's really easy. All right. Next one is not as much of a game, but this is March Madness brackets. Now it's not March anymore, but you know what? It's okay. Um, I have two different brackets that we've been using. I have a free, free jazz one. So I'll leave the link down below and it's got 16 different jazz artists. And what you do is you play the videos of the two jazz artists next to each other. 
the kids vote over which one they like better and that person advances to the next round until you get down to whoever is the best jazz artist in the Google slide presentation um and so this is has been a hit again it's linked down below and i will also link i have the same type of lesson but it's with instruments so they're all instruments of the orchestra i like to do this one before we talk about instrument families to be like hey do you remember what all of these things are called and what they look like what they sound like and all of those things because they can like watch the video they can hear it they can get all those things in their brain before we start talking about like all the different instrument families so that's been a huge hit i will leave that linked down below as well as the jazz one all right next up is stand up sit down this is a really easy like would you rather or this is or that kind of game where you just basically put two different things on the screen and the kids either stand up if they agree with number one or they sit down with number two you could do this academically by having them answer the questions that way so they could like stand up if it's a or sit down if it's b or you could also have it just for fun you could do like what's your favorite instrument this instrument or that instrument you can do um different songs you can play two different songs have them show which one they prefer you could have i mean you could have them do like pretty much anything you could have them do questions about them we did this at the beginning of the year as like a getting to know you and so we just had different questions some about like them some about their music preferences and just all that different stuff but it was a lot of fun and the last one we're gonna go with is google slides games there are so many different games you can do on google slides like it's crazy um so two in particular that i love um one is a guessing game so basically you have a google slide i have a whole video about how to make these so i will leave that link down below you can also get some in my tpt shop so i will leave a link to one of those down below but basically it's a google slide and there's different answers so like i have a candy rhythms one where there's four different rhythms and there's a word a type of candy and so if it was like um i can't even think of anything now if it was like candy cane i don't think it was on there but we're gonna go with it anyway with it anyway then they have to find the rhythm that would match candy cane which would be like t t ta um and so then they would click on that and then it tells them whether they are correct or not if they're correct then they go to the next one if they're not correct then they go back and try it again until they find the correct one um so that's a really fun google slides one we have done this my favorite way to do this is to actually just share my screen and have them type the answers in the chat um, and I usually take that down as a grade or um, and then I usually put the same slides into a Google form and have them answer the questions that way. So we do like the one as a warm up and then the other one as more of a grade. Um, and then the other type of game that I really like on Google slides or on boom cards, which are similar, but like really it's like a whole thing click the link down below to check it out um would be matching games so where kids are matching two different things um i like ones like i have one that's like snowman i need to do like a summer version but there's like snowman and like drag the hat to the snowman that matches um so those are good like academic ways to play a game but also like oh good you know what we're talking about which is always a good thing all right, friends um that's clearly not every game that you could possibly play on zoom but those were ones i was really trying to stick with things that are still music related still academic but don't involve singing so that you have lots and lots of different options again i have a video about singing games for zoom so you can check the link down below for that as well as anything i mentioned including that freebie and the virtual music lessons book if you need some more ideas and yeah thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoy this don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss anything else and hit the like button too because that helps other people find it as well if you have any questions leave them in the comments and i would love to know your favorite games that you're doing on zoom um and especially because that helps me see who made it all the way to the end of the video so if you made it to the end of the video shout it out by leaving that in the comments thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye